So big question is why is Ajax so popular? Maybe you've already seen that a bit. It makes sense, right? There's a, a really a true feel that you can have that you're working on like a desktop application, that the web is kind of fun to use again. Um, it's nice because it's easy for developers to adopt. If you have a lot of people that have been doing web development for you, um, it's not too much to learn some of the new standards for uh, some of the web technologies. And another nice thing about Ajax is there's no plugin necessary. So that means you don't have to download that Silverlight or that Adobe um, Flash plugin that are right around 5 megabytes. Adobe might not be a big issue because I think they might hit 80 to 90 percent of the market share, maybe a little bit more. But uh, Silverlight's really new, and it's going to be a while before people really start downloading that. Um, downloading that well, especially if they. I mean, there are still people out there using dial-up. Um, so those are some big, big downloads for people. Also, I. It's important to know that Ajax isn't proprietary, so there's no, there's no proprietary development tool for it. Um, that might be seen as a negative. It might be seen as a positive. That's really going to be up to you and how you frame that. Um, but it's important to know that, uh, as I said, JavaScript is kind of the key scripting language behind Ajax. And there are JavaScript plugins for Eclipse, for IntelliJ, for NetBeans. Um, even if you just are using Dreamweaver from Adobe, they actually have their own Spry Ajax framework tool there now too. So any major IDE that you're going to be using has JavaScript support. Um, so I think that's a plus because you can use anything you're already comfortable with using to develop Ajax. And the other nice thing is that it's not browser specific. You know, any browser can render this stuff, um, any modern browser that people are going to be using. All right, another couple of benefits. As I said, there's no plugin to download, a really small footprint. Um, it's just is going to be mainly the, the size of your JavaScript that you're going to be writing and your, your images that you're going to be loading that's going to be the footprint for your Ajax. But it's nice you don't, again, don't have that 5 megabyte plugin. Um, and for the most part, current browsers are going to handle Ajax similarly. They should at least handle Ajax similarly, but um, rendering of some of the web um, the rest of the web application can sometimes look a little bit differently. As I said, Firefox can sometimes render differently between Windows and between Mac, and can render differently than Safari or Internet Explorer. And Internet Explorer 7 and 6 can render a little differently, and now Internet Explorer 8 is coming out pretty soon too, um, which will definitely render differently than the other two. So there are a little bit of differences. I mean, they're not huge differences, and if you write well-formed, um, well-formed web pages, you won't have too much issue, but there are some things to be aware of. Uh, another couple of important parts of, or benefits of Ajax is that um, you can do incremental or iterative migration to it. What I mean by that is if you already have uh, a website with a couple hundred pages and you just want to bring in a couple of Ajax components, like let's say, um, again, if we're doing dealing with insurance or something, and you're trying to find uh, a, a, an insurance provider in your local area. And so you have a little form that says, type in your zip code and hit submit. Uh, typically in the past, you'd have to bring back a whole page that would tell the people where, you know, where there would be offices. But with Ajax, if you just wanted to bring in a little part that would do that to increase some user friendliness, uh, you could just do an Ajax request on that little form, and it would bring back maybe a little box underneath that place to enter in your zip code, or maybe it would just replace your zip code completely and just tell you, hey, here's Brian Schaefer. Um, he lives right by you in Honolulu, and he's going to, um, he's going to be able to, to deal with all of your auto insurance needs. Uh, the other thing is that developers still are a lot cheaper for, RA, for Ajax, and they're more experienced. Um, Silverlight's brand new. Flex has been around for a few years, but Flex 3 just came out, uh, which is kind of developing on a, it's on ActionScript, but now on ActionScript 3, which deals with writing, um, writing ActionScript a lot differently than Action 2. So that's, people aren't going to be as experienced. Um, Flash developers will be, have been around for quite a while. But um, if you're trying to get some other of these RIAs 
the, the web developers who can know JavaScript are going to be the cheapest and most experienced people I think you're going to find. Um, learning curve I think is also less difficult, especially if you've got a team that already knows web development. Some of the disadvantages of Ajax is that, one, it can, it can be turned off. Um, that's an issue. JavaScript can actually be turned off by the user. Uh, but there are techniques, writing progressive enhancement or another industry term of hijacks to be able to write code that works well even with JavaScript turned off. And the important part of that is still for accessibility uh, because we need to be writing web pages that will work even if JavaScript's not working. So that that's can, can be a good thing that you'd actually have good written web pages. Um, again, a disadvantage could be that there's no package development tool. Um, and the other thing is that plugins, even though they are large, really give a true look and feel to technology across all of the browsers that Ajax just won't do quite as easily. All right, so let's actually talk about Ajax. Um, there are two sort of fundamental ways you can go about writing an Ajax application. As I said, you can do this incremental iterative development if you're trying to adopt your website to bring in different components that you need. Uh, eventually, though, you might be bringing in enough components that you'll have to sort of revamp your website. The other thing, completely. The other way you can do it is if you're just sort of starting from scratch, you can do single page development. Um, by that I mean uh, if you um, – the nice thing about Ajax is you don't actually have to take people to new pages. You can just update individual spots on the page. So theoretically, you could just have one actual web page, like one application, that is bringing in all this information and moving information out continually through it. So you would only need to have one home page. Um, now I would mentioned before about search engine optimization. The downside of that is if you're a page that's really important about getting indexed across all of your 100 pages, and you use Ajax in a single page format, um, search engines aren't going to really realize that you have all that page depth and aren't going to be able to really bookmark or index those extra pages. The same would be if, if, if you use Silverlight or if you use um, Flash or Flex. Those are all wrapped up into one application too, so you're going to have really bad, you're going to have issues that you're going to have to work around with SEO um, and with users being able to bookmark, bookmark certain sites. It can be done, but those are just some issues. So some of the technologies that go into Ajax, I said JavaScript already is the, the scripting language that holds everything together. Um, the next is HTML DOM. That's the hypertext markup language, HTML, and the document object model. Um, and basically what that is, is that provides structure for your web page. And it's made up of all these programmable objects that you can move around on your web page, you know, images, lists, form elements, things like that that can be moved and rearranged and interacted with dynamically through JavaScript. A uh, third technology is CSS. That stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And that's the modern way of actually displaying presentation on a website. No more do we use tables to, to lay out what pages look like. It's important to use, it's, it's better to use CSS. There's less code involved. It's easier for accessibility and screen readers to be able to read. The other three important technologies of AJAX are the XHR, that's object, which I had said before. That stands for the XML HTTP request object. Again, that's a little bit misnamed because it doesn't need to be XML, but that is what it is. Um, and that's actually going to be doing um, your data transmission back and forth uh, between the server and the client and in the background, you know, because it's at the abstract layer. And then we have two different data formats, XML and JSON. As I explained to you, those two, those are just different ways of wrapping up um, our information that we're transmitting back and forth. So XML has kind of been the, the long-standing data format. JSON is more of a newcomer. Uh, if you've got people that are used to writing JavaScript, JSON will fit really well. And if people aren't, then XML is not too bad for you. JSON can do things a lot quicker with a lot less code. <clears throat> 